Hi, everybody. Welcome tonight to Wednesday night, Singspiration at the chapel. We are so excited that you are here tonight. I invite you to sing all of the favorite hymns that Kilani has brought for us tonight. And I just look forward to sharing with you during Table Talk and just everything that's going on at the church this next coming week. So come join us as we sing Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groanings Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory Father, tonight, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we thank you that when we can come before you and we're singing. Lord, a lot of times people think that the church is just a one-hour episode and nothing else goes on. Lord, this is a life. Um, it's a calling. Um, it's not just a job, but it's a gifting that you give to us, Father, to be able to be on purpose, be on task, as we share the good news of Jesus Christ. So I pray tonight as everybody is listening, singing with us, I pray that their hearts will be stirred to the importance of the time at hand as we share your precious love with those who have not come to a relationship with you. So I pray that you'll touch us tonight as we join together, as we encourage one another, uplift each other. Father, that you will be glorified in all that we sing and all that we say. In the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen and amen. Well, we want to welcome you tonight, and uh, we uh, I'm hoping that we have some guests who are down in Elma, Washington. Um, it's uh, uh, just a dear friend of mine. Uh, her name is Luann, and she's been a pastor for years within the Church of God movement. Uh, then to Mike and Rhonda uh, Stump, we just want to say hello to you in Olympia, Washington. Uh, we want to say... Um, uh, to our friends over in Scotland and uh, uh, England, and I mean, we, we talk about the little towns around us here, but the fact that people are watching from all over the country, and that just blesses my heart. So tonight, we welcome you, and we just, as, as the slide said, we are so glad that you're here. Okay, tell us what they can do, what we can do for our prayer requests and for getting in the loop. You can always send your prayer request to 509-309-0958 at any time throughout the week. And we will get those. Or you can tonight comment below here on this broadcast. And we'll see those a little bit later in the service. This is one I learned when I was three years old. Walking, Walking in sunlight, all of my journey, over the mountains and through the deep veil. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is 
is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, the sunlight of love. Oh, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, that in my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, yes, Jesus is mine. I have a song that I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Oh, my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. I have a home prepared for me since I have been redeemed. I shall dwell eternally since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. As my husband said earlier, we are really glad that you joined us tonight. If you are a regular attender here at New Beginnings Chapel, you can get in the loop, if you haven't already, by texting that same phone number I gave you earlier, 509-309-0958. Text the word LOOP, and uh, that will make sure that you get in the loop, get all the announcements of things happening here and any prayer requests that need to be sent out to be prayed over throughout the week. I also want to let you know, if you're watching online tonight, you already are aware of this, but you can join us on Sunday mornings as well at 10.30 a.m. for our live stream of our second service, Sunday morning worship service, right here on Facebook. Well, you know, a lot of times if people have asked, you know, when they're watching on Wednesday nights, we know on Sunday mornings, and they say, well, how can I support New Beginnings Chapel? Well, there's four different ways that you can help us with our, our soup ministry, our outreach, our warming shelter, our youth ministries, our children's ministries. Um, Wednesday night services, uh, Sunday morning services. Um, if you can be with us, that's awesome. If you can and you want to be a part of what we're doing here in the valley, Kay, tell us, what are the four ways that they can do this? During our worship services, you can give in person here in our giving boxes that are set out. But anytime you can give online at our church website, which is www.nbcww.us. So that's www www.nbcww.us and you can go there and do online giving or you can mail it in to the church and uh, if you need that address you can go ahead and text that same phone number I gave you earlier and we'll make sure you get that address or you can send it have your bank send it to us and part of your bill pay or automatic payments um, do you know what NBCWW they may not even know what that stands for but if we put New Beginnings Chapel Walla Walla it would have been a really long uh, address yeah <laughs> thank you um and so we just shortened it to nbc ww there's a uh, uh, upcoming thing events that are taking place but before we go to that i want to tell everybody if you see this t-shirt that i've got on and it says new beginnings uh, jesus is number one and walla walla washington if you would like one of these shirts let us know tonight I don't know, the 10 bucks or something like that. And uh, we would love to have you just sharing with the people you come in contact, throw our T-shirt on and run around town in it. And so uh, just let us know tonight. Uh, you know, put it in the small, you know, under the where. See, I can't even say where I want you to put it, in, in the caption box right below you. Uh, and let us know. And uh, the size that you need and uh, address, if you're not here, so we can send it to you. And uh, we would love to, to make up a bunch of these and fire them out to you. Now, what's happening on the upcoming? Well, we're starting our senior adults meetings. Um, Why we call is that? that? I'm getting older. Are we starting it because I am becoming a senior? Is that what it is? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> 
But the first gathering will be a luncheon, and it's a potluck luncheon, and it is Thursday, May 12th here at noon. And so if you can join us, bring something to share. And we don't even have an age limit set on that. If you consider yourself a senior, you're more than welcome to come and join us. That's called a, a what? It's called a potluck luncheon? Is that what, really? This is a potluck? potluck? Yep, that's what it says. I think it, I think it should be a pot blessing because those bless, those pots are blessed with precious food that everybody has prepared for it. So come for the pot blessing on May 12th if you're a senior. And men's retreat May 13th through the 15th coming up in just two weeks now. We've got this weekend and then next weekend we've got the men's retreat coming up. And I would really love to have you go with us, uh, fellas. We're going to go up and we've just got some, we got Gil Alden who's going to be our speaker and uh, Kay and I are doing music up in the mountains up at Snoqualmie Pass at Double K Adventure and Retreat Center. And so if, you, if you're interested in that, please just caption below tonight and say, hey, I'd kind of like to go to that. Can you get me some information? A three night, and we'd love to have you with us. Our all-church camp out is September 9th through 11th. If you have not made reservations for camping, you can do that. I found out yesterday there's actually 10 spots left up in the meadow for camping. So how many camps are available total that we've got? I have no idea because they've added some more new ones, so I'm not sure exactly, but... I know that there's only 10 left up in the meadow, and all the cabins are gone. So if you can't come and join us for camping, um, you can come and join us for our Saturday annual picnic and field games. We have a lot of fun with that. Or Sunday morning for our worship service on the 11th up there, because we will be up there, not here in the sanctuary. Sunday morning worship, we have two services, 9 a.m. and 10.30. One service only on May 29th, which is our fifth Sunday of the month, where we all come together in the sanctuary and I believe, are we having a pot blessing? Is that thing? We're having a barbecue. We're it is a Memorial barbecue? Weekend. Ooh, okay. So we'll be doing a barbecue that Sunday, Sunday morning. So bring something to share. Okay. Side dish, salad. All right. Sounds really, really good. Continue worshiping with us as we lift our voices tonight. Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortune. salvation purchase of God born of his spirit we're washed in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i and my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with his goodness we lost in his love this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, oh how I love Jesus. Oh, Savior's love who died 
to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood. The sea. Sing with us, everybody. If you want to text a prayer request tonight, 509-309-0958. Let us know how we can be agreed in prayer with you. It doesn't matter if you think it's a big prayer request or a little prayer request. It doesn't matter to God because he knows your heart tonight. And I would love to have you place in the comments below our Facebook feed tonight uh, that prayer request as well so that we can be agreed in prayer. And my team in the back will bring up any of those requests that you may be typing here. And uh, a little later into the our table talk, you know, we can bring those up and just, uh, just be agreed in prayer before we close out the service. Prayer requests are so important. Uh, you know, so, well, I can keep it to myself. Oh, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. It matters to us and it matters to God. And so I would just ask you to just be thinking about that. Uh, how we can all be agreed in prayer together. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals his way Watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Oh, for the wonderful love He has promised, promised for.
has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are we. Welcome back to Table Talk. It's fun to do songs with you. We've been doing that for almost 40 years together. Almost? <laughs> I think it's more like almost 42. It is, isn't it? It is. Oh, you were just a baby. So what we're talking about on Sunday was the promises of God. And um, I don't know, if, did you realize that there's over 7,000 promises? That's in what the word? you mentioned. Yeah, 7,000 promises. I was not aware that there was that many. I knew there was a lot. There are several different people who have researched it and some say there's 7,235 others say there's 8,000 you know 300 and some so I guess you'd have to go and just pick, pick out every what you think is a promise or what you think is just a statement maybe from God but uh, I, what I did was I, I printed out a, a handout well you printed out the handout um, in fact I was going to have Kay do a, a slides which we do every Sunday and uh, she looked at me when I handed her all these <laughs> scriptures, and she said, you've got to be kidding me. And I said, no, we can do that, can't we? She says, can't we put this on a handout? And really, seriously, Julie, that was a, a really great idea, because I had so many people come to me afterwards thanking me for the scriptures and the notes and everything. I think we're going to do that probably every Sunday. We'll put some. Up. Don't give me that look. Isn't it easier to do that, the printout than do all the slides that I always give to you? Pick the one half dozen the other. We, we've been married 40 years. You can't see it. Not four years, 40 years. Uh, she gives me that look and going, really? It all, it all depends on when I get them. When you get, <laughs> when you get my notes, that's right. Well, let's just kind of go over some of the things that we found out. I mean, there are so many fascinating things uh, because the Bible is truly, we believe it's the inspired word of God. Uh, it's many faceted. We know that. It's a book of history and poetry and Proverbs and parables and biographies and profound importance to men and women who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So really, it, it, it can be classified as a book of promises. And so my, uh, my major title on the nature of God's promises, what is the nature of God's promises, and, and what type of promises are they? And found that there's, there's the conditional promise, you know, and there's the unconditional promise. And for example, uh, an unconditional promise would be found in Genesis 9-11 uh, when God is speaking to Noah and his sons after the flood. I will establish my covenant with you. Uh, neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there anymore be a flood to destroy the earth. Uh, and an example of a conditional prayer is based out of Second Chronicles. And, and I think a lot of people know this. If my people which are called of my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their evil ways. Seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. See, a conditional, that conditional, will humble 
themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Not just stay. That's when somebody accepts the Lord. You know, you got to turn from that that evil, that that wicked way, that time of sinning, and and your life is changing. Your life is 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 becoming new. Uh, and so, uh, and God's distinction of prayers. I mean, there's God's distinction of prayers. There's God's intention of his, uh, or distinction of promises, intention of his promises, uh, the purpose of God's promises. And, and Isaiah 2.4 says, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. A nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore and you know as i was sharing you know when that scripture is really written for the the christian and for uh, us to know you know when that one is put when after jesus comes back uh we're not going to be at war there's not going to be any more uh plowshares you know made into swords and everything like that and it's fascinating because matthew 24 6 has just the opposite on that and where he says that until he comes again there will be wars and rumors of war, and he said uh, that that nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. So the the one is for God's millennial, Jesus' millennial kingdom. They're not going to be at war anymore. But until Jesus comes back again for that second second return, we're going to be at war. And it says in the end times, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, and um, and so. You know, yeah. earlier when you were reading Second um, Chronicles seven fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um, if my people who are called by my name, that scripture reminds me that tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. Uh-huh. And that's been a theme a lot of times for the National Day of Prayer is that scripture. Um, Any time that our nation has needed prayer, yeah. um, that has been a scripture that has always been in the forefront. And so uh, tomorrow our sanctuary will be open here. Mm-hmm. And you can come anytime between 7.30 in the morning and 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Um, use the parking lot ramp door and come into the sanctuary and spend time in prayer. But such a um, such an incredible time for us to pray for our world, and uh, it's it's a time like no other we've ever seen before. Um, you know, there's been times when our nation's been at war and, and different things, but it's just such a an unsettled time following the pandemic mm-hmm. and so many changes. But the thing that I was thinking of in the National Day of Prayer and, and people coming to pray is we can stand and, and stand on the promises, mm-hmm. stand on these promises, these 7,000 plus promises mm-hmm. that you've talked about, and, and we can claim those over our nation. We can claim those over our families. We can claim those mm-hmm. over our world, um, over our children, I think we over need our to. schools. I think we need to. We, we kind of become complacent and... and uh, we don't, we don't, well, what's the important, I think, and as you were just uh, sitting here talking about this, you know, what we really should do is, is a, a National Day of Prayer. Uh, they have, you see it, see at the poll, you know, for the high school. In September, back yeah, to school. I think, I think it would be awesome to meet, like, we have a, a flagpole pavilion down here in Walla Walla. I think it would be awesome for a group of people to meet down there and just to pray around that flagpole and this scripture if my people which are called of my name and i think the united states was called of god i really do i I don't believe that the united states just happened because some pilgrims left england and they wanted a new land i think god ordained this nation to to be one nation under god and people say well we don't put our trust in 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 god yes we do and if we don't uh it says so on our we're lost (laughs) we're lost yeah um, Isaiah 7:14 is a promise that's already been fulfilled. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign: Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And that's a promise, of course, of Jesus being born, the uh, Messiah being born. Um, and another promise of being fulfilled in our present generation: 2 Timothy 3:1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, and we are definitely in a time of perilous times. Um, just distinctions of prayers, intentions of prayers. Um, uh, Genesis 12, 2, it says, I will make of thee a great nation, <coughs> excuse me, and I will bless thee and make my name great, and thou shalt, and thou shalt be a blessing. Who, do you know what that, that promise was for? Uh, Abraham. Yeah, Abraham, and to, to that, that, that they were gonna, he was going to be a great nation, but it, it was, that one was really only to Abraham, 
But you have to think, and you have to think about when God said that uh -huh. to Abraham. At that point, Abraham didn't even have any children. And so here God's giving this, prom this promise of, I will make you a great nation. Um, you know, your, your descendants will outnumber the stars. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a pretty incredible promise to make to someone who has no children and who at the time mm -hmm. was 100 years old mm -hmm. and his wife was 90. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine that that promise from the Lord was a little bit um, probably in Abraham's eyes, like, is that really a promise mm -hmm. or is that... You know, can I count on that? And it was. It was a promise. And his yeah. descendants have outnumbered the stars. I'm not sure if the scripture says that Sarah laughed. But can you imagine in your 90s? Well, it, it said that they, <laughs> named, they named their son Isaac, Isaac. which is laughter. Mm -hmm. That's what it's translated is to laughter. And so I'm sure. Um, I don't know if laughter would be my yeah. initial reaction. <laughs> 90 years uh, old. If I, well, even now, mm -hmm. if so I found out that I was expecting, I'm not sure that laughter would be the emotion that but I would have. But isn't it amazing how God blessed and brought forth um, the vast numbers of uh, children of Israel? But he also, Ishmael, um, he made that a, a great nation. And if Sarah had not gotten impatient with God and uh, done what she did. You wonder what the outcome would have been. But you know, that promise to Abraham was specifically to him, but he makes promises to all of us as in Revelation twenty two seventeen, Whosoever will, I love this, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Whosoever will. You know, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children. Now listen to this, little children of the world. It doesn't say the little children, my little children. Mm -hmm. It says red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And we are. We are all children of this world until we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then we become children of God. I think one of the things I was talking about this with someone uh, a week or so ago was God is always faithful to his word. Mm -hmm. And his timing and our timing isn't necessarily the same. Oh, yeah. But if you look back through history, I was sharing with them, God always leaves behind evidence mm -hmm. for us to find that what his word said came true. And we were talking about the scriptures of the Old Testament and the stories, um, the stories of the Exodus, the, the Israelites being um, freed out of Egypt and slavery. And how, you know, scientists even now, mm -hmm. all these thousands of years later, have gone back and they've found evidence that has proven that entire story to be true. Every aspect of it, all yeah. the plagues and everything else. They've found that the Noah's Ark underneath the ice on top of Mount Ararat in Iraq. Um, God always leaves behind evidence to prove himself mm -hmm. over and over that his scripture is true so that we can know when he gives us a promise. Yeah. He is going to be faithful to complete it yeah. and fulfill it. Um, the scripture that says, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to mm -hmm. complete it. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he will do it. And history now can go back and prove that what he has said he would do and what he said he did, he did do and he will do. So if he says to you, if he gives you a promise, you can count on it mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he will do it. It may not be instantaneous, yeah. but it will happen. I would say that his promises are reliably 100% um, uh, Solomon in 1 Kings 8.56 says, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, that hath not failed one word of all of his good promises, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Um, he keeps his promises. It's not true uh, necessarily of men, uh, because as I'm going to share here in a little bit, and we're going to talk about Man has good intentions, but they always don't follow through on those intentions or those promises. Think about um, the promises of Psalm 23. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. When he wrote, and, and you know, we are his sheep. It says that we are the sheep of his pasture. And um, you think about that, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And you just, you can go through that entire 23rd Psalm, and it's just promise after promise after promise. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, Titus 1-2 makes a reference to eternal life. 
um, and God is saying, if, if, if you will trust me and believe in me, receive my son as your Lord and Savior, as, as the King of Kings, um, you will, I, I promise you, you will receive eternal life. Um, and he promised that really before the, the beginning of time. Um, in God's keeping his promises, Hebrews 6.18 says that it was impossible for God to lie. So I believe when he says that we will receive eternal life, and, and the scripture, you know, I'm going to share a little while with this very same one, but John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Psalms 105, 42 and 43, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant, and he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. God doesn't forget his promises. I believe that. God doesn't forget his promises. We as men have a tendency to forget our promises. Um, that's one of the things about the, the marriage vows, you know, I promise to honor and cherish and love and till death do us part through sickness and, and health, through riches for poor. And I wonder how seriously people take those vows. I mean, we see what the divorce rate is right now and uh, how it affects marriages and families. Um, so man doesn't necessarily keep his promises, but God does. And, and he gives us those promises. Politicians and advertisers and friends and co-workers and even family members sometimes make promises that are not kept. And I mean, I, I look at you and it's hard to imagine, but you and I can say we've, there's times we haven't kept our promises, you know, and people who are listening tonight, you know that there are times when you haven't kept your promises, but that's not so with God. God keeps his promises to us, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. Read Jeremiah 32, 17, honey. Ah, Lord God, Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and outstretched arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. <laughs> what do you think about that? What do you think when you well, see that a, scripture? That's a scripture that I learned as a song when I was a teenager. There you go. Um, it was basically just that scripture. Ah, oh Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, mm -hmm. oh Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. And it just went on. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of scripture yeah. in song as a little girl. And so now I can recall those scriptures sure. and go back. Um, you know, I was thinking about the, the promises. And one of the ones, a scripture that you quote a lot of times is the one that says, there's no temptation take at you. But that, that what is common to man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is, he is faithful, faithful to make a way of escape. Mm-hmm. That's a promise yeah. that there is nothing that you will be tempted with on this earth. Yeah. Everything. Everybody's is, been tempted. Yeah. Everything is common. It's a, it's a common temptation. There are common temptations everywhere mm -hmm. that everyone faces. But it says God will be faithful to make a way of escape. For now, you. Have you ever thought about the 40 days that, that Jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted, it says. He was tempted. And then it comes back and says, and then he was tempted again by the enemy. So really that scripture is very true. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. And he was the son of man. Mm -hmm. He was the son of God. He was God in the flesh. And so he was tempted. Have you ever thought about that? He was tempted with all of the temptations that we're tempted with. But Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power, outstretched arm, and nothing is too hard for thee. Uh, um, he said to Mary, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Um, so I'm just, I love the fact as I was looking at these uh, scriptures and, and promises, how we don't talk very much about them. And we've really been in the, the, the book of promises, the word, uh, these last two or three weeks since we've gone through some, just some really horrendous things uh, in, in families' lives that we have known and friends. And um, uh, I think there have been questionings and wondering, does God hear our prayers? But if we go back and we think, think about all of the promises God has kept in our lives. And number one is the promise of salvation. I don't know how people get through it without Christ. I don't know how people uh, live their lives without Christ. And there are those who, who strive to be uh, uh, Christ followers, but the world weighs them down. And there's, I mean, guilt. And um, 
uh, depression and anxiety. I mean, I think those are spirits. But there's, I also, think they're spirits. there's also the promise of my grace is sufficient yes, for uh -huh, thee. Uh -huh. yeah. Even in the midst of all those bombarding, do you think there's a war going on to try to discourage us, to make us ineffective? I think it's going on all around us, and that's why I've, I've talked a lot about putting on spiritual glasses and seeing the things uh, in, from a spiritual perspective versus just a physical you know, uh, element of the world around us. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think the purposes of God's promises are? What are the purposes of God's promise? He gives us all of these promises in the word of God, so what would you think well, the purpose would be? The Bible, you, you said B-I-B-L-E stands for you know, basic instructions before leaving earth. Mm -hmm. And so when you have 7,000 of these promises yeah. inside an instruction manual, yeah. Um, they're there to teach us mm -hmm. things. They're there to warn us about things. Yes. They're, yeah. they're there yeah. to encourage us. Yeah. I mean, they have multiple purposes. I mean, the big one on, on the warning to those who are unsaved, the end is not going to be good. It's going to be a tragic end in Psalms 1970s. Is the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God. And then he, he tells us as believers in 12.6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and, and scourges every son whom he receives. So it doesn't mean when we accept Christ that it's going to just be a perfectly yellow brick road. And, you know, in fact, even the, the Dorothy and the Scarecrow and the Lion and, and um, uh, what was the other ones? The, the Tin Man. The Tin Man, you know, they thought, oh my, my, you know, follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow, and they thought everything was going to be good. Well, it wasn't. There were, there were storms all along the way, and there will be storms all along the way for us, um, but I. But we have the Lord, and that's why He gave us the Holy Spirit to to fill us and to to uh, push out all of that stuff that the enemy wants to fill our hearts with. Uh, he promises us a saving promises, and again, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. You can say it with us: Who whosoever believeth should not perish but have everlasting life. And John 2.25 says, and this is the promise, this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Just like back up in, in Titus 1.2, he promises us even eternal life. Romans 10.13 declares, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, that doesn't mean going around and, and saying Jesus Christ in the swear word. They're not calling on the name of the Lord, uh, you're taking his name in vain. And the word says, don't take the name of the Lord God in vain. But when you call upon the name of Jesus, it, it says, the Lord, you, 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 if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. There's motivating promises, guiding promises, comforting promises, lifting promises. Um, I love the guiding one in Psalms 32, 6. The Lord says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. If you remember that, that message that I, I taught you, and I've been married for 40 years, and if we're across a room and, and, and you catch my eye at you and I'm ready to go, you know, I don't have to yell across the room and go, Kelani, let's go, I want to leave. You can just kind of tell in my eyes that I'm, I'm, I'm motioning that it's time to leave, and, and you're good like that. You, you have these great eyes that very much speak to me and you let me know when you're happy and you let me know when you're sad and you let me know when you're, you're, you, you want you know, to go a certain direction and, and uh, eyes are very, very, yeah look, she's doing it right now to me. She's just, she's just looking at me and she's going, okay sweetie, so where are we going with this? <laughs> But that, that scripture just really speaks to me when it says, you know, I will direct thee, I will guide thee with mine eyes. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we read, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. <laughs> and she's still looking at me with those eyes. And, and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways <laughs> acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. Just like those eyes, directing, you know, not saying a word, you know. Um, oh, he and then comforting. We comforting, about that, yeah. The fact that, you know, my grace is sufficient for thee. Cast your burdens upon him. 
or he cares for you. Yeah. I mean, you can go on and on with comforting ones. Oh, uh, yeah, lifting, lift, lifting. Encouragement, yeah, promises of encouragement. Hope. Yeah. I was going to say just a minute ago, hope. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, yeah. For I know the plans I have for you, says yeah. the Lord, and they're plans for good and for a future, not to harm you or for evil. Um, and the one that I love is I shared it with someone today um, that was struggling, going through a situation, and she, she sent me a text, and she said, Raising teenagers, and then she did in big capital letters said, is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about, you know, she's like, this is what I want to do, and can I just go do this, and can I just bury myself in this? And I said, you know, Scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yep. And I said, and here's the better part yet. His mercies are new every morning, yeah. and tomorrow is a new day, and his grace is sufficient <laughs> for you. And as my wise and dear, precious mother-in-law used to say, and this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. um, teenagers eventually grow up. They're only teenagers, you know, for a short period of time. Period of time they're only, years. <laughs> they're, they're only junior hires for even a shorter time, but it seems like a lifetime. <laughs> thank goodness. But it's true. His mercies are new every single morning. Tomorrow is a new day. And his grace is sufficient. And I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All of those great promises yeah. that we have, that we can lean on and know that, you know what? This too shall pass. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a scripture. Uh, that's, that's, you know, according to Lee Laverne. <laughs> but it's so true because God gets us through. Mm -hmm. And we will, we will pass through that storm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember Dr. Dobson saying um, raising teenagers is kind of like the um, space shuttle. He said oh. when it's returning to Earth, he said there's this period of time, he said, where the um, astronauts have been prepared for months. They've been preparing. NASA and the scientists and doctors and everyone have been preparing them for this entire journey and, you know, telling them this is what to expect, this is what you need to do. And at the most critical point of reentry, where it is the most crucial and it's the, the part that is the most dangerous where they could literally burn up mm -hmm. in that span. It's a two minute window where everything goes black and there is no communication whatsoever between the space shuttle and control central. They lose all communication and it's the most critical part of the journey. But they've been preparing them for this part, and all they can do on the ground is wait and hope that everything they prepared them for, they'll do, and they'll come through that most critical point where there's no communication and come out the other side okay. And Dr. Dobson said, and that's the teen years. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, those are the teenage years. He mm -hmm. goes, where there's zero communication, and you know it's the most critical part and they could burn up and crash and die yeah. and he goes and all you can do is wait and hope that everything that you instilled in them yeah. all the promises yeah. all the scriptures all the stuff that they come out the other side yeah. and yeah. they come out unscathed and that's kind of what i think maybe the lord thought when he left uh, with this scripture uh in john 14 3 i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself and where I am, there ye may be also. He left instructions for the disciples to go and to wait in the upper room till the Holy Spirit came upon them. And in his mind, just like that, like you're talking about re-entry, he's been with them for three years. He's already seen, even while he's still here, <laughs> Peter denies him know, and the scatter. That, and did you ever think that as the Lord's ascending, he's like, oh, Father, are you sure they're good enough to be, <laughs> yeah. you know? Are, are well, they, they weren't good enough. Are they going to be able are, to handle it? Yeah. Know, are they prepared enough to handle this? And mm -hmm. it's like God said, nope, that's why we're sending the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Titus 2.13 speaks of the promise that Jesus is coming again. So as you're talking about him sending up to heaven, he is also promising looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's coming back again, everybody, but he's not coming back as a lamb. He's coming back as a lion, and he's going to come back victorious. Um, and and I'm, that's what we are, we are living for. And, you know, will Jesus come back in my lifetime? Maybe not, but he will call me home. He'll call, each one of us will be called home, uh, possibly before he comes back to this earth. Uh, that's why we have to be ready. That's why we have to be about the Lord's business. And... 
um, you know, people have, have wondered, you know, what we're doing about some of the projects that we've been working on. And the Lord's just really laid on my heart the fact that he has given me a mission, and that mission is to shepherd this flock, to pastor this congregation, along with you, Kay. And uh, as, we, as we walk this journey, we've been here 17 years in this church, 27 years in the valley, and God uh, has given, I've seen it many, many times, he says, I've called you to shepherd, and I have been... You know, we've raised uh, tr Christmas trees. We've had a gift shop. We, we had a traveling ministry for 25 years. But God has called us here. And if you would have asked me 30 years ago where Walla Walla was, I said, where in the world is Walla Walla? But God knew where it was, and God knew where he wanted you and I to come. And you were pretty sneaky there, girl. We were living over on the west side, and she said, can we just come off the road for just a couple of years, just two years? And I said, two years, right? Two years. We were, all right, we'll go to Walla Walla for two years. It's just been a long 28 20, um, years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've been here going on 28 years. But God is faithful. And I love this scripture where it says in Revelation 21, And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, and he's talking to John, uh, right, for these words are true and faithful. And we need to claim these promises, everybody. We need to claim these promises, um, uh, and we need to know how to obtain them and how to receive them. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God. There's only one way to the Father. And that's through Jesus Christ. There's not many paths. And uh, uh, there's a resounding no when it says, you know, well, I'll, I'll go another way. I'll find another. No, he says no. Man may say yes, there's other ways. But God says no. Um, and Romans 1.17 speaks of going from faith to faith. Did you? Did, I'm sorry, I don't know if you were in the, the sanctuary when I said that. We're going from faith to faith. Remember what I said about that? Faith to faith is not going from religion to religion. Faith to faith is going from faith as an uh, early believer to your faith as an adolescent to your faith as a teenager to your faith as a mature adult in the Lord. It's growing in your faith every day from one level to another. And we obtain that, as Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you remember that group that Kay loved? And we were at the summit, and uh, the translators were saying, you remember what they said? Uh, by a certain year, every known dialect. I think it was 2024, if I remember mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. They said that there will not be even the most remote tribes in their most remote parts of the world. Um, every one of them will have the word of God in their language. Mm -hmm. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, and then there's another scripture that goes along, but not only in hearing, don't only just be hearers of the word. Mm -hmm. But how's it go? Be ye doers the of the word, uh, that it take root into your, you know, yesterday you and I were, were uh, planting little bulbs in your, your uh, flower garden, and uh, it, it didn't seem like, you know, they were going very deep, but we, we made inroad into the dirt, and we covered it up, you know, strong, and, and they're just spindle little things, but they're going to turn into beautiful flowers. And for us to be hearers and doers of the word and plant the seeds and raise up men and women of God that are going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we have to exercise patience. That's the toughest thing. You know, yeah, those bulbs aren't going to bloom now for a whole year. A whole year. <laughs> They're just going to be there in the ground. Have you ever heard somebody say, I don't pray for patience. I don't pray <laughs> for patience because God allows lots of things to come. I don't think that happens. I think that, that God gives us the ability through uh, divine intervention uh, and his scheduling. Acts 7, 17 says, But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Who got impatient in that relationship? Sarah, Sarah got so impatient, and she got ahead of God. And I don't want to get ahead of God. I don't want to fall behind God. I want to be exactly where God wants us to be. Um, Acts 1, 4 through 5 says, And being assembled together with them, this is where he's talking about the Holy Spirit, commended them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promises of the Father, which saith, He, ye have heard of me, 
for John truly baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost in a few days henceforth. And I think what's what's incredible about the promises of God and his word is you can start with Genesis 1-1 where mm-hmm. it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And we know that is true mm-hmm. because it, we're here. Mm-hmm. The heavens and the earth are here. And, and, you know, he formed them. And then all throughout all 66 books yeah. of the Bible, the promises that are there and how God has been faithful to Abraham and just the different stories that go on. Yeah. And then we get to the 66th book. Yeah which is Revelation, which is yet to come. Yeah. You know, we, we see all the other books, all the 65 other books, God's promises, how they've been fulfilled and over and over have been fulfilled um, in our lives and in the lives of those people. But now we've got Revelation sitting here, which is the future. Yeah. And it's filled with a promise of our future and eternity and what's going to take place. And so if you look at it and say, God has been faithful for 65 books. Right. I'm pretty sure I can count on him to be faithful for the 66th That's one, right. That's which right. is what is yet to come. And the, and the greatest decision any man or woman will make is to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's the purpose for us being here. Really, the, the very first purpose is that, that we, we come to know Jesus Christ and then fulfilling that promise to go out and to all of the, the lands and to share the gospel that every person, it's not his will that any should perish. Many are called, uh, and I've changed just one little word here. I don't hope I don't get myself in trouble with the Bible scholars here, but many are called, but few are chosen. Uh, what, imagine what would have happened if that few are chosen to few have chosen. And isn't that true? We've been given freedom of choice and free will. We make the choice of how we're going we're gonna, to uh, accept this promise of salvation and life eternal. And so I'm, I'm going to ask my team tonight, was there any prayer requests or anything that we could bring tonight well we want to close out with a word of prayer with y'all and uh, please uh, remember the chapel uh, remember um, us in your prayers uh, this has been a really a crazy two three months that we've gone through and we're going into this in really into the spring and summer months now and I'm so excited about what God has in store for us and uh, uh, thank you so much for supporting the New Beginnings Chapel with your faithfulness and your giving and your prayers um, I believe God has us here for a reason, has us here for a purpose. Um, and so, Kay, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer as we close out tonight. Father, we thank you for this time that we've been able to share together. And Lord, we're so grateful for your promises. And as the old hymn that we've learned since we were children, standing on the promises of God. Father, that's our foundation, to stand on the promises of your word. And we know, Lord, that you have proven to be faithful over and over and over. And we can trust you that your word will be true. And you will be faithful to your word. And that we can count on those promises. Yes, Lord. So, Father, I just pray tonight for those that uh, need a promise in their life. That they will go to your word, Lord Jesus. And one of those 7,000 plus promises will be what they need to hear tonight. What they need to read. What they need to hold on to. What they need to stand firm upon. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. And, Lord, we just uh, give this time to you now tonight. We pray for those that have been watching. And, Lord, we just pray Mm -hmm. that you'll go before us. Give everyone a good night's rest now, we pray. And bring us back together again safely in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us.